Hey YouTube, it's Dr. Marita P and welcome to another edition of the Nurse Lounge. In today's edition, we're going to talk about how the nursing, how nursing education has been watered down. If you want to see my thoughts on why I think nursing education today is watered down, please stay tuned. Welcome back. My name is Dr. Marita P. Registered nurse here. I've been a nurse for 18 plus years. I've been away from TikTok, or not TikTok. I've been on TikTok. I've been away from YouTube for about mm, 40 something days and I'm back. I'm back now to in this topic, talk about why I feel that the nursing education is watered down. Now, as you all know, I've been in education for 16 and a half years or so. And as a result of that, I've had the privilege of working at various institutions over the past 16 years. I have done a two-year RN program, four-year RN program, LPN technical school, to a LPN to RN bridge program. I've did for-profit programs, proprietary programs is what they're also called. And of course, HB, HBCUs, college, PWIs, I've did it all. In the course of those 14 or 16 and a half years, I have noticed one common trend, that there's been a paradigm shift, a paradigm shift in terms of education, in terms of what is being taught today and how it's being taught. When I went to nursing school, it was an expectation that you did your work, you were honest, had integrity along the same lines, that you, um, there was a certain ethics code that she went by that you did what you did and you did not cheat and you did not do the things you wasn't supposed to do. You showed up to class on time and if you did not, there was consequence, consequences and repercussions. Today, that is not so true depending on your program. Now, there are over 260 something thousand nursing students at any given time at any point in nursing programs in the United States. With those programs, there are, or students, there are roughly 4,200 different nursing programs and counting because they're making new programs as we speak. With that being said though, the problem is we are having more and more a need for educators to come in and teach students but yet they have not all been vetted. They don't know how to do education. They've not been properly trained. They just happen to have a license and a, a certain level of degree. Now, of course, depending on what level of education that you're teaching, um, you have to have a certain level of education yourself. Typically, you have to be one above the level in which you're teaching. Um, in my case, I have a doctorate, so I can teach anything from the doctoral level on down. But if you have a bachelor's degree, as an example, you could only teach like the two-year program um, or LPN programs. Now, with that being said, there's some schools though, no matter what you're teaching, they want you, they want you to minimally have a master's degree. And so when you have those varying levels of entry into education in terms of what you can teach and how you can teach and how many years of experience you have, some care, some do not, some do not care. You have this watered down effect of education. We also have people at the very top in terms of the administration who says we don't want to lose that many students. So we're going to make sure that these students pass the program no matter what. And see, for me, I won't, I won't co-sign on that. I have some integrity about me. If you're not a qualified student and you don't pass the class, I'm not going to do anything to help you pass the class. If you are failing the program, you are failing the program. That is not to say that if you, you know, have come and you've, you've helped or whatever, I'm not padding grades is what I'm saying. And you will find faculty who will pad grades, help you, make sure you pass, give you the answers. This is what I'm talking about. Give you the answers. And then we have weaker, incompetent students who end up a lot of times failing the NCLEX. And they're like, then they want to blame the program because they failed. No, sis, no, bro. You failed the program because of you and because of the non-complacency or the complacency, shall I say, of the instructors that who, who taught you. I keep telling you all, you all are the product of whoever teaches you. That's it. You're the product of whoever teaches you. So if you had a poor educator, you will be poor. If you had a good educator, which all these are subjective terms in terms of what is good and what is poor, then guess what? You are going to be a, a good nurse. That's how it works. So when people think that it's, 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 a, it's a, a privilege to, to get help or a flex, shall I say, to get help and to, oh, my instructor, they coddled me. They made nursing school so easy for me. They actually have low value for you. They don't care anything about you. It's the ones who make it harder and, and, and test you at the level of rigor as the program should require who actually care about you. Now, I'm not talking about their delivery. I'm not talking about, you know, if they're mean or nothing like that. I'm talking about the truly, purely the structure of the program. It should be rigorous enough to determine 
who is going to become the best nurse versus who does not. That's what the program is supposed to have. If you have a nursing program that let's just say you have 50 students come in, come into this cohort. And in two years or however long the program is, you have 50 students who come out. That program is not rigorous enough. That's just the facts. It's not rigorous enough. Now you shouldn't have it where two people graduate or when 50 done came in, but it shouldn't be where 50 people come in and 50 people go out. That means your standards are too low. That means you hadn't vetted the students to begin with. Your faculty are poor. And I said what I said. It is not a well-constructed program. You are you should never have the same amount of people coming out as you had coming into the program. Because that means the program is not rigorous enough. People are on have the misconception of what nursing school is. They're not teaching us this, they're not teaching us that. Do you all not realize that the whole nature of a nursing program is to get you ready for the NCLEX, for the didactic component, and for the clinical component, getting you ready for the world of nursing in terms of how to operate, how to govern yourself on the floor as a nurse. So when people say, well, I didn't learn anything in nursing school, partially it could be because of you, number one. Number two, it could be because of your instructors, or it could be because of both. You didn't learn anything, nor did you, they teach you anything. When your instructors teach to the test, they are watering down your program because we don't have a copy of what was going to be on the, on the NCLEX. And if we don't have a copy of what's going to be on the NCLEX, then guess what? There, we don't know. So there we teach the material. We had our last graduates, um, tell us that our tests in the nursing program were harder than the actual NCLEX. That is a compliment. That means we did what we're supposed to do. That means we did what we're supposed to do because the test was harder. Our test was harder than the actual NCLEX. She got 75 questions. She said it was easy, got her results, she passed. That's a program that's doing good. Now I've talked about before, another thing, you all are not vetting your programs coming in in the first place. So you don't even know that you're going to these watered down bad programs because you don't take the time to vet it, to vet the program. You all will sit here and get on Amazon and look at the reviews for this. You will go look at Airbnbs, look at the reviews of that. You will look at the hotels and look at reviews for that. Look at restaurants and look at the reviews for that. But you won't look at the reviews and, and the ratings and the criteria that needs to be met for nursing programs. Yet you're paying 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, even upwards of $100,000 for these programs. So a lot of the things that goes on the nursing program is a result of you. Also, if you decide that you're going to, they're, they're creating these accelerated programs now, right? They've been around for a while. So I don't want to say creating them, but they've been around for a while. These programs have the intention of getting you in and out of school, right? Now, if, the, if a class is typically 16 weeks or 14 weeks or whatever it happens to be, and then narrow it down to eight, do you think you're getting the same content that you would be if you did it in 14, 15 weeks? Watering down the program. So when you come out of these programs, you can take a test and check boxes, but you can't critically think. They haven't given you enough time to actually process anything to critically think. Watering down the program. So anybody who's watching this video who is currently in a program that teaches you to the test, they have not even started doing the NCLEX um, next gen prep yet, and you about to graduate next year. A program who gives you the answers, a program who uses the, the, the test as the study guide for you to come back and take the test to pass, and then you still fail. Any program that definitely has no, they have structure, but yet they don't allow you to critically think or challenge you to critically think is a watered down poor program. Do you attend those programs? If so, what are you going to do to assure that you are getting quality education? Again, you're spending all this money on education, but do you not care about how much you're spending on education that is poor and you cannot come out here and do the job you're supposed to do? Just something to think about. If you are not in a program yet, I impress upon you the importance of taking the time to vet the program that you are trying to get into. And if you take the time to vet the program you're trying to get into, you will narrow down very quickly whether this program is, is a good fit for you or not. Now, I get that there's some times where you have to go where you have to go because of how much it costs and things like that. But when you go into these programs, make sure you still have vetted the program and that, you know, if it is one of those kind of programs that you say, okay, I know it's not the best program, but I'm going to do the best I can. But at the same time, don't complain about what you get. You directly get what you put into it. If it's a bad program and people aren't passing, 
what makes you think you have a great chance of passing? If the NCLEX pass rate is 25%, that means only 25 for every 100 people pass the boards. Is that something you want to gamble with? That you have a one-fourth chance of passing the NCLEX based on the program that they have? Think about it. These watered-down programs are in part due to standards by the institution, the fact that you have poor faculty who don't know how to teach, by the fact that you have situations in which, let's say you have people who are not vetted, students who are not vetted, so therefore they let anybody into the program, anybody into the program, knowing that these are low caliber students who may not be able to um, have any type of substantial ability to complete a program because they have not vetted them. They have low or no GPA requirements. That's a watered down program. So if you have a watered down program and there's no GPA requirement to get in, that's a red flag. And a lot of your for-profit schools will do that, have a very low or no GPA requirement to get in. Uh, that's, I mean, and, I, and again, I do realize sometimes we have to do what we have to do. You are the exception, not the rule. Because as the rule states, people who come to these programs do not have a great chance of being successful. You didn't vet them to begin with. So you will lose a lot along the way. But then these are the same programs who allow you five or six chances to pass the class as well. So you know what? That doesn't mean you're competent. That means you've taken the class five times, the test five times. Therefore, you probably have memorized some things at this point in time. So don't be in the mindset of going to these watered down programs. You want one that actually is going to teach you what you need to know about being a nurse so that you can be the best nurse you can be. And I think that sums up this video. So thank you so much for watching this video in its entirety. Follow me on my social media, social media other platforms. Um, I have been spending a lot of time. People are like, where have you been? Spending a lot of time over there on <laughs> TikTok. And now I'm back. And if there's anything that you want me to do video-wise that you're interested in, definitely comment that below. But until the next time, you all, take care. Bye-bye.